We are gathered here to debate the sanity of patient number 1111, also known as Alice Cooper. Hello and welcome. I have to admit, I find it a bit surprising that Alice Cooper hasn't appeared more often in comic books than he actually has. I mean, he's always had this over-the-top, cartoonish presence in his stage act and music videos. And that seems ripe for exploitation in the comic book medium. This is exactly what Kiss has done for the last 20 or 30 years, but Alice has not. So let's look at what there is for Alice Cooper comics. There is the three-issue, 1994 series written by Neil Gaiman to coincide with the release of the album, The Last Temptation. There are two six-issue limited series in 2015 and 2016. There is also a comic book biography of Alice, but I'm not counting that because it was an unauthorized cheap piece of crap. Alice also has a quick appearance in the Treehouse of Horror comic from 1995. And he also gets a quick shout out in, of all places, Betty and Veronica number 264 in 2013. Ironically, Betty's mother is also named Alice Cooper. The three authorized series all approach the Alice Cooper concept in the same manner, with Alice being a spirit or entity with mostly vague, reality-bending abilities. In essence, he is the god of nightmares. I suppose that's conceptually on par with the current Alice Cooper image and persona, but it's not a very interesting take on the character. Which isn't to say these comics are bad, but they do sort of turn the persona into a generic, godlike being. In my opinion, the basic premise, what makes the Alice Cooper character work, is that he's intrinsically human, not a being with supernatural powers. The horror of the personality is there's a very real possibility that any one of us could turn into Alice Cooper given the right or wrong circumstances. That's what makes him terrifying, the idea that he lurks in all of us, waiting for his turn to come out and play. And the Alice Cooper we're all familiar with is something that has manifested through Vincent Fernier and become a rock star, in spite of the sadistic, self-destructive glee he always seems to revel in. The only comic book to approach Alice Cooper as a flesh-and-blood person is also the very first comic that Alice appeared in, Marvel Premiere number 50. While not specifically created to coincide with the release of an album, it was nevertheless based on a recently released concept album, From the Inside. Actually, it's called a concept album, but it's more like a journal of Alice's real experiences while he was drying out. Each song on the album is either about Alice's emotional struggle while he shakes off his alcoholism, or they're about the people Alice meets during his stay in a sanitarium for treatment. The comic book, like the album it's based upon, is an account of Alice's life during this time. However, in the comic book, Alice ends up in a sanitarium due to exhaustion from touring, rather than being treated for alcoholism. He gets admitted, meets delusional war veteran Jackknife Johnny, the haughty Nurse Rosetta, and the murderous and creepily in love Millie and Billy. Alice is then basically tortured to get him back to a state of sanity. Eventually he escapes and discovers he was accidentally committed. The person the sanitarium intended to commit was Alex Cooper, an actual crazy individual who has a thing for radial tires. Alice is apprehended again after this discovery, and the comic ends as he is confined again, with Alice accepting that he is probably crazy after all. Because, you know, who isn't? This comic just works. It especially works if you're familiar with The Legend of Alice Cooper at that point in time. Ultimately, it's a straightforward humor comic, with some terrible but appropriate puns, wordplay, references to popular Alice Cooper songs, and some interesting background gags. Like, for example, Alley Oop and Popeye just randomly standing in the background of the sanitarium. This single-issue comic is also representative of the basic Alice Cooper concept. He's a human who enjoys the absurd and tragic circumstances of his own life. He feels a weird sense of joy when the people he encounters affirm his belief that the world is a cruel shithole. However, it's hard not to acknowledge the Neil Gaiman and Michael Zuli series from 1994. One could argue this three-issue prestige miniseries is the basic conceptual template for the two other series that would follow 20 years later. Alice Cooper is presented as a supernatural showman who is trying to tempt a young man into joining his theater. Beyond that, Alice's overall goals are mostly unclear. It's not a challenging story, but it does represent the principles of Grand Guignol Theater rather well, and Michael Zuli's artwork is both beautiful and grotesque which provides the comic with an appropriate, disturbing atmosphere. As an aesthetic package, it is pretty much perfect. And as a representation of Alice Cooper as a creepy supernatural showman, it works quite well. 
Overall though, it's solid and a decent read, but it's not outstanding. The two series put out by Dynamite in 2015 and 2016 are kind of generic, to be honest. Alice Cooper is explicitly the lord of all nightmares, and a rock and roll star. The concept itself is neither defined nor developed very well. The series presumes you know the persona of Alice, so it doesn't bother trying to establish his character. This series was intended to be an ongoing series, but it only lasted six issues before being cancelled. The story in that series is slightly reminiscent of the plot of Sandman, in my opinion. Alice is trapped in a contract he needs to break so he can resume his duties as Lord of All Nightmares. And, well, things just happen, and it all feels quite disjointed. The following miniseries, Alice Cooper vs. Chaos, is a conflict between Alice and all the well-known characters of the former Chaos Comics publishing company. Again, this miniseries presumes you know who all these various characters are. This is, quite honestly, a reasonable presumption. It's a miniseries that probably only appeals to those who miss seeing Evil Ernie or Purgatory in action. Otherwise, yeah, it fell out of my brain as soon as I tried to read it. In the end, I could certainly understand if someone argued that the Neil Gaiman series is the best of the available Alice Cooper comics. And, you know, it is good, well-written, and references the mythology that Alice has built around his character. But, to me, I really like the manic Lee of the single-issue appearance. It really captures the human essence, the self-destructive nightmare that lives inside us all. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. And I will talk at you later. Until next time.